Hi there, and welcome to episode 15 of the ADHD Adult UK podcast. I'm James Brown, co-founder of ADHD Adult UK, and I'm joined as usual by Rocky Dennis Lookalike, Alex Connor, who was also co-founder of our organisation. Alex, hi. Yo, bro, what do you know? Who am I looking like of? I don't know that person. You ever seen the film Mask with the grotesquely deformed chair? I know I've got to call for no. reference point that's not opera. You won't you won't know it, will you? Never, just never just seen imagine it. a grotesquely deformed child that gets uh, obviously lots of abuse and has a, 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 it's very brave and shares his mum. Wasted reference point on you. Hopefully, at least one of our 11 listeners will have found that funny. No, anyway, I'll, try. I'll look out for it the next time I'm at the library. Thanks. Anyway, Rocky, how are you? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Pretty happy. I can't believe so many thousands of people listen to your awful voice every week. <laughs> We've been sent a couple of letters. Can I read one? No, oh God. It's from Robert from Kidderminster, James. It says, it says, listen last week, can you stop James from talking about filling his hole, please? I'm trying to have my dinner. <laughs> and the real one is? The real one is yeah. from, someone will be uh, nameless because they have an idiosyncratic name, so I don't want to to uh to share that who've given us some really just thanking us for our resources and i really love that that we have on the website resources that you can download a thousand pounds each as always that was free everything's free that might help if you want to take them with you to a gp to give you some some uh evidence which they often ask for but i just wanted to read out the last bit which says Anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys. I love your humour and honesty, and the podcast is great, really, except maybe Alex's greeting. <laughs> oh, is thank you. brutal. Thank you. One of our 11 listeners is at least on board with the Alex's a twat campaign. Thank you very much. Brilliant. I'm on board that's, with it. That's made my day. So, moving on, as usual, our podcasts are a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. In the last episode, we talked about domestic anxiety and my whole. And this week, this episode, we're talking about a tricky but very important and common aspect of living with ADHD as an adult, um, which we get asked a lot um, about to discuss. And that's it's sometimes called coexisting conditions, sometimes called comorbidities. Um, but it's a lot of the related issues that adults with ADHD have. The three parts include evidence-based psychoeducation, our personal reflections on comorbidities, and the third and final bit will be top tips on the area that we've been given or we uh, that we may find works. Just a quick shout out to Matt, um, who, suggested we, who suggested that we cover um, comorbidities of ADHD. And remember, if you want to get in touch, um, uh, please do so either by the social or by WhatsApp. Yeah, we had a, there, there was a, somebody else as well, a couple of other people, I've forgotten the names, but a few people suggested comorbidities and it was a really fun thing to to look up for them. So thanks to all of you, we do we do read them all. Yeah, well, well done for writing their names down, Alex, because I'm sure they feel really valued by the fact that you couldn't <laughs> even be asked to record who, who it was that asked you to do that. Executive dysfunction? No, nice, <laughs> or laziness, nice, you decide. Nice, nice try. So Alex, it's obvious from anybody that's ever met you, listened to this podcast or seen your face that you've got an abundance of problems um, that go way beyond your ADHD. <laughs> but what, what are comorbidities? <laughs> that's good. Um, comorbidities or coexisting conditions, these are conditions that would still be there if you stopped having ADHD, if you treated and managed your ADHD to a point where you didn't have that, would you still have the condition? If you would, that is called a comorbidity. It's a weird name. I don't like it, but we, we'll discuss this more later. But it's an incredibly wobbly line with any psychiatric disorders, or especially if there's two coming together. Because how can you actually tell or prove that, you know, one would go away if the other one was... You, you can't. Right. So so actually tell us about them, then, Alex, the comorbidities. <laughs> okay. Well, they are many and varied, to put it mildly. If you have got ADHD and you spend your whole life without at least one other coexisting condition, you are in the significant minority. 80% of us will be facing something else. And mostly something else that is psychological or psychiatric issue. This could be a child onset one like tics or autistic traits that often come then and learning disorders and other stuff or the fantastically named externalizing behaviors. I like that term, James. I probably had it when I was a kid. It's, I want it on a t-shirt because it's summarized as aggression, delinquency and hyperactivity. 
That's definitely three of your five at AJ's. Delinquency is key. It doesn't have to be childhood stuff, though. There are physical things such as obesity and cardiovascular issues that are probably caused by the life choices that come with untreated, unmanaged ADHD. But because if you then took away the ADHD, they'd still be there. They are still a comorbid disorder. And then there are the more adult psychiatric ones, substance abuse, anxiety, depression. And it's fudgy because they could be comorbid. They could have started early. It really, really gets a bit complex. No, no, it's not opera or poetry, Alex, but I know you like stats. So can I give you a few stats? Please do, you absolute massive nerd. <clears throat> so, so in the general population of adults who don't have ADHD, mood disorders, which could include um, you know, depression or bipolar disorder, affects about 10, 11% of the population. It's 38% in adults with ADHD. Anxiety, which we talked about a form of anxiety in, in the last episode, um, is, a, is a collection of disorders such as PTSD, agoraphobia, specific phobias, for example. And again, the general population of non-ADHD adults, about 20% would have an anxiety disorder, and that's nearly 50% in adults with ADHD. Substance abuse, three times as uh, likely to have substance abuse as an ADHD adult. Increased risk of obesity, increased risk of having um, thyroid disease, believe it or not, having an eating disorder, having an intermittent explosive disorder, and that's not um, diarrhea, that's actually um, being... Um, uh, so incredibly explosively angry, um, often in a situation that's not appropriate. And all of these coexisting conditions of comorbidities, there's a good, strong evidence base for. But I've got a question for you, and this is something I'm not sure about, is, is if you focus particularly on the psychiatric ones, things like obesity could be linked to binge eating. So you can almost see the pathway there. But for things like depression and anxiety, are they caused by ADHD? You know, so so how are they co comorbid? Um, are you making stuff up as you go along, or again, is there some kind of evidence biologically for this? <laughs> there is, there is. Um, you're right; it isn't clear. It really depends on the person, and and you probably or might never know what came first. Is it the chicken or the egg? It was the egg. Birds, <laughs> birds that chickens evolved from, still laid eggs. I've got distracted. What were we talking about? We <laughs> <laughs> it was I think, I think I think we can all agree you'd actually finish your part. Alex. No, no, this is important. We're saying it's hard to distinguish or diagnose some of these conditions because they can all manifest in a similar way. Some of the ADHD and autistic spectrum disorder traits, they, they look identical and, and might be with some people, but not in others. What it means is we need to screen people for these at the same time as screening for ADHD, and we don't. And we need to fund more research to look for connections and treatment options. We don't. And, and those treatment options need to be more individualized to the holistic person. I like saying holistic. It, it's, um, very, and, and it's, it's very rare that I um, agree with anything you say, uh, <laughs> as we know. But actually, that yeah. for me is, is the most important thing certainly you've ever said, and certainly the most important thing so far in this podcast, that we have a healthcare system where it's almost reductionist in nature. If somebody goes to see their, their GP because they've got anxiety, then they're treated for anxiety. If somebody goes to the GP because their, their mood is low, they're treated as if they've got a mood disorder. And in very, very uh, kind of rare cases, would a healthcare professional think, well, is there something that's underlying this? That ha would have the knowledge that ADHD in adults is so prevalent that it's possible that that could be an underlying cause and it's worth a quick symptom test to see whether or not you know, this could be the reason for you know, uh, constant dysthymia, for example, is a constant low mood and, 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 and might not cross into the border of actual depression. But if someone comes to a GP saying, I just always feel low, I'm not sure how many GPs would think, well, actually, that's something we commonly see with ADHD. Let's do a symptom testing. You're right. It needs to be on the radar of healthcare professionals so that you're screening for ADHD when people present with this vast list of issues, medical issues, psychiatric issues, um, which you know are, are found in a higher frequency in adults with ADHD. You're absolutely right, James. And when you get to the psychiatric uh, society, cultures and psychiatrists we've got in this country, they, they know this too, and they're, they're fantastic. We talk to, I said, don't we, quite a lot, and, and my my 
friends that are psychiatrists. Yeah, quote, 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 unquote. Yeah, <laughs> relatives. Um, they, they definitely know this. And this is where my information is coming up from, is, is actually their research. It's not me telling them what to do. They already know. They, it's them that have told us this. And what they do do, 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 is treat the one that's causing the most distress. That would be the medical advice from, from a, 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 a real professional. And that's, that's what they do. Okay. On that note, we'll take a break now and we'll come back with some personal reflections on our comorbidities. Alex's section will obviously take a very long time because, you know, he's got a lot going on, but we'll see you in part two. Welcome back to part two of episode 15 of the ADHD Adult UK podcast. We are talking about comorbidities that exist with ADHD, that's conditions alongside ADHD that would still be there if your ADHD somehow magically disappeared. Okay, James, we have talked a little bit about what, what they are and what causes them, some boring stats that you gave us. So <laughs> what about you? What's, what's, do you have an experience of this with you or your family or what's your comorbidities experience? Um, yeah, I'd say it's extensive. In fact, if this was top trumps, ADHD top trumps, I'd fucking thrash you at this, to be honest, because um, I need to take a breath before I go through this list. Um, right. So I am almost certainly bipolar. In fact, I'm having my um, assessment very soon for that. So I'm currently undiagnosed, but I, I know from tracking my mood, that's likely that I'm something called bipolar 2 or cyclothymic. Um, I have a history of substance abuse, which again is a class of comorbidity of ADHD. I have anxiety in many forms, um, whether it's general anxiety, whether it's social phobia, whether it's the domestic anxiety uh, we talked about. I have binge eating disorder, which is related to the impulsivity of my ADHD. So I, you know, historically would, we used to have something called the fun cupboard uh, in our old house, which is where all the chocolate and crisps and cake and biscuits would be. And I would just eat the fucking lot, to be honest, and then hide all the packets at the bottom, like, literally reach down into the, to the bin past the vegetable peelings. We don't eat vegetables and the banana skins. We don't eat bananas and, and push my hand through all the filth to hide the wrappers from all the, 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 the beige food and the sweets and crisps and cakes that I'd binge binged on to the point where I've got vomit rising up my esophagus and I, and I feel sick, but I could not control that urge to do that. Believe it or not, asthma um, is seen at increased frequency with ADHD. I was a childhood asthmatic. I have thyroid disease. I'm hypothyroid. That is seen with increased frequency in adults with ADHD, although I don't have testicular dysfunction like you, and that is a comorbidity of ADHD in adults. I mean, three of them are fine. <laughs> <laughs> just the other two it, that is a list james it would be kinder to just put you down at the end of the day sam honest. says that that's sam says that quite a lot actually you've got a brick outside what? with my name on it how would it be offensive if we started making adhd top trumps for the charity because that I is a brilliant that. idea it is isn't it? it is we could just get by 18 different packs of top trumps and mix them all up so we didn't get bored <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna forget to do this anyway. We are, yeah. Yeah, it's a Definitely. great idea, we, which we'll forget about or lose interest in. Um, um, so we've we've covered my massive, yeah. impressive, kind of almost world beating list of of comorbidities. Let's see what you got, Al. Put your cards on the table, mate. No, you've definitely won. I've had issues before, as we all know. I was treated for things like anxiety and depression, but all of them were because of the ADHD. You know, these were direct, and they didn't. If the ADHD went away, because I know this, because when I got treated, they went away. So that you know that is quite important. What I've actually what I've written down is bipolar, substance abuse, and sociopathy, which coincidentally was also my answer to the question, "Why do you want this job?" <laughs> I work for an academic. <laughs> <position>. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when I wrote a 2010 review, I was the junior partner, but I did co-author a, a scientific review with some amazing brains and I on comorbidities of ADHD for the World Federation of ADHD. And I still didn't realize I had ADHD. This was a low point for me. Um, missing 90% of the seminars at the, the World ADHD Congress because I'd wandered off and not realizing it is professionally embarrassing. Sorry, Johannes. Um, can I just quickly, can you tell us a story about the bag 
Alex, because this is this is an okay, well, tell the story about the bag. Please, please tell the story about the bag. You only you like this. Okay, so I I was in love recently, and I found a bag. They give you free bags at conferences if you're a scientist, especially if they're funded by the drug uh, companies, because they they want you. And this bag was sponsored by Elvance, which is a, a commercial variety of Lizdex, the, the the drug that James is on. Yes, and this is. And it was sponsoring the world's first, the, the the first congress for the World Federation of ADHD. And I had no memory of that that's what it was called, that I'd been at it, that I'd sat in ADHD seminars. I didn't. It's genuinely professionally embarrassing. So thanks for that, James. That's my pleasure. Um, you've also got obesity as well, haven't you, which is a, a comorbidity you didn't mention. You shouldn't. They can't fat shame me. I'm way better than that. It will reflect poorly on you. <laughs> You know what else uh, reflects poorly uh, on you, James? This what? fucking game you're about to make me play. Ah, oh, brilliant. brilliant. See, I, I actually said you didn't take it out of the script this week. <laughs> and um, actually, I'm a bit disappointed you didn't because that, that showed a sign of, of cleverness, which I, I wouldn't have normally credited you with. So <laughs> you. it is time for our weekly and popular with some of our 11 listeners game of um, what's James lost, mislaid or forgotten this week. But Alex, there's a twist this week. <laughs> So you've got it's to guess funny, this. It? It's not, of course it's not fucking funny. You've got to guess what I didn't forget this week. So there's three things, oh, and good. two of them I lost or forgot or mislaid, and one of them I didn't. So option one is a bin. I lost a bin. Option two is I forgot to take the washing out of the washing machine for four days, and it absolutely stank afterwards. And option three is that I went outside to listen to some music and uh, put my AirPods in and forgot to put the music on. So I just sat there outside. So you either, you went outside to listen to music and you didn't listen to music. You yeah. went to do the wash. Oh, with the washing, did you not do the washing or you didn't do it, but it didn't No, stay? did it. No, no, did it. Did, did the washing, but just left it in the machine for four days. Yeah, but I have to guess what you didn't do. So either you didn't, you either didn't do the washing or you did forget the washing, but it didn't stink. I can't decide which that was. No, that, no, that, that's just, it's, it's just an option. Don't worry about the smelling, Alex. I guarantee, I, I reckon, and I'm quietly confident. Mm. Because and we have established this, your main comedity has been a fucking idiot comedy. <laughs> that you went out to listen to music and you didn't turn the music on. That's what I think. So, but remember, there's two things that I did do and one that I didn't. So you, you're saying that I didn't go outside. Remember, remember, I've already think... forgotten the rules of the game. <laughs> the... <laughs> Let me, let's 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 just restart, Alex. Two this week we've turned I it think, around. Yeah. So two of the things I actually. I did, and one of the things I didn't. So there's a red herring. You've got to spot the red herring. So... It's the last one. The last one's... No. no. Oh. Jesus. Oh. oh, okay. So uh, can I just apologise to our 11 listeners? This is going to be the longest podcast ever as I explain the rules of the game to Alex again. So What was the first one? There are, there are three options. Yeah, what's actually, the first? Tell me what the two, first one is. Two, two of them happened and one didn't. So the right. first okay. one was I lost yeah. a bin. The second one was I, I put washing in the washing machine, washed it, but left it there for four days. And the third option is I, I sat outside to put some music on with my earbuds in, but forgot to put the music on. So which one of those didn't happen is what I'm saying. I don't think you forgot the washing. Fuck it. You've got it right again. Yes. If I win three times in a row, can we play a different game? No, Top you can't. ADHD, no, but just, just, just to... to um, Give some context to that, Alex. I, I lost a bin. How'd you lose a bin? So we, we have two bins inside the house, which we put our recycling in. I think when I was emptying it into the recycling bin, I just, <laughs> chucked, I just <laughs> chucked the whole chucked the whole bin in there because I wasn't was paying it a brabantia. Yeah, yeah, cheaper version by a, yeah. a, Swed, a Swedish yeah. um, flat pack type organization. And oh, I yeah. did I did in a moment where I was I was really struggling. I thought in my my piece i find sitting outside with a cup of tea and a fag with playing music specifically and i went and sat outside and didn't put the music on and just sat there and after about 10 minutes thought oh yeah i should press play really um yeah so the the thing i didn't actually forget to do was was the washing so i'm fucking gutted you've got that right which six, means isn't it? six out of 12 no that's 50 percent Boom. Boom. yeah that, um, minimally competent in med school 
<coughs> boom indeed anyway that brings us nicely and sadly and angrily to the end of part two we'll be back in part three with some top tips about comorbidities see you then welcome back to part three of episode 15 of our adhd adult uk podcast we are talking about comorbidities of adhd today in the first couple of bits, we did psychoeducation and our personal reflections and James's like incredibly long list of problems. I mean, his worst ones he didn't even mention. But they were, they're not they're not related. We're going to talk <laughs> top tips now, James. Top tips for comorbidities. Yeah, can we can we do that? I'm not entirely okay. sure we have them. No, I know we can. I think we can. I think the key thing is this. This is one of the reasons psychoeducation is so important in ADHD because we get a diagnosis you know if you're lucky you get medication you cast out into the world and you don't actually understand you know some of the um other issues you you may have which may be related to or caused by your adhd and that's really important because you know it can have an impact on your life so if you've got an anxiety disorder such as social anxiety understanding that this is part of your adhd can allow you to adopt uh strategies and to to not self-chastise i mean i have massive social anxiety issues and i'm learning now to not self-chastise i mean i've had a tattoo on my wrist that says it's not all about you and that's, that's to remind me this isn't a top tip by the way that's to remind me that if i'm having a social anxiety event no one else gives a fuck they're not all sitting there thinking oh god james is anxious he's ruining the party they're all having fun it's just me sitting there thinking oh god this is terrible but I'm now, because I know this is because of my ADHD, learning to manage this. So psychoeducation is really important. If you do have, um, if you feel you have ADHD and aren't diagnosed and you have some of these issues, if you're listening to this podcast because a relative you think might have ADHD, sometimes learning about the comorbidities gives you a fuller picture. And what I'll finally say is, and this is for health, any healthcare professionals that might be listening, just be aware that it's not always going to be somebody presenting with you know inattentiveness and impulsivity be aware that you might actually deal with somebody that comes in because they've got a gambling problem or they've got uh, binge eating disorder or they they've got issues with mood and understanding that that might have an underpinning reason that could be ADHD is really important so the the top tip really is for everybody everybody in the world to read a bit more about ADHD and learn. It's learn about ADHD and learn about those comorbidities. Alex, what about you? I really like those, James. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's to think about the aspects of your life that need the most support and think about whether that is because of the ADHD or is it situational about where you are right now in your life um, or is it a third thing? Dealing with the worst bit first is generally good advice. It's the advice from medical health professionals that we are not, remember, James and I are not proper doctors. We're not useful doctors in any sense. We both have a doctorate, though, but um, mine's in molecular genetics and James is in is in using crayons. <laughs> I actually have a T-shirt, which Mrs. ADH, she bought me, that says, not a real doctor. On it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Very much Ross from Friends kind of doctors, aren't we? Yeah, so, we are. So from experience this is very relatable device to deal with the the worst bit first in my specific case starting with the adhd was the best way for me to control a lot of the other issues in my life to get to the point i often talk about in my in my when i'm coaching which is sort of to to maintain a, a peaceful wildness because the wildness the adhd isn't going away it's a chronic lifelong disorder you, you don't you don't cure that not at all Oh, okay. Product? Um, so I was, I was actually, no, I was distracted because I've noticed I've just written Alex is a cock on my paper, <laughs> um, which is probably the thing I write most frequently on paper in general. Just during, even when we're not doing the podcast, I, I tend to find myself writing Alex, Alex is a cock. So I was yeah. distracted by, um, I was distracted by that. A uh, product recommendation of the week, um, different podcast, you know, something, something by somebody else that's good, maybe. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, can I tell you a story that. about a podcast, Dead Quick? Yes, you can. Someone that I really like who did a thing on the BBC was talking to us on the on the Twitters 
on at ADHD Adult UK if you want to get involved. And and they were somebody they they suggested this podcast, but they said, that, well, I haven't heard it yet. But if what, a podcast I really like is by two guys, James and Alex, <laughs> and I hadn't didn't realise that it was the same podcast. They do also have ADHD, so that re- it just made me laugh. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Okay. That was episode 15 of the ADHD Adult UK podcast, where we covered comorbidities of ADHD. We will go into more specific detail in future episodes about some of those specific comorbidities. We do acknowledge that we've skirted, you know, really over the the lightest level of detail on some of these. And for some of you that have anxiety or bipolar disorder or binge eating disorder, um, I'm sure you would like to have more information about that. So don't worry. Sadly for me, it means working with Alex more, but we will go into more detail in specific episodes in the future. But for now, that was episode 15, and we will see you soon. Take care. Bye, all.